أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Welcome to the Dope Muslim Woman podcast. Welcome back to season five. I would like to welcome everybody here to this phenomenal show. As you come in, we want to follow our typical normal tradition. We want to give each other salams. We want to start off in this very peaceful Baraka place. Give you, give one, greet one another. Walaikum salam, Sakina. Thank you for being the first one. And share the podcast. Share the podcast and give salams. Walaikum salam, Miriam, Kimberly, Fatima. Salam alaikum. Welcome, welcome, welcome to season five, The Ascension, the Dope Muslim Woman podcast. We are in the series called The Awakening. And I'm super excited. You guys know that I've been talking for weeks about this amazing topic, why I don't want to get married. We know that, mashallah, this polarizing issues, um, issues driven topic, why I don't want to get married, has been on everybody's mind for weeks. And we have had so many layered dialogues and conversations. I'm just humbled to be here. I'm hum humbled to be in this service sort of role and capacity as it relates mashallah, to this dialogue. I'm happy to be a facilitator of this. I have some, um, we have an amazing show for you. It is layered. You got to keep up, okay? We are going to start first and foremost with our ladies, who I'm going to be humbled to introduce in just a second. Then we're going to segue to our brothers, and then we're going to have everybody here together, okay? So this is a very layered um, uh, conversation here tonight. So now, alaikum, everybody, please share the podcast if you can. Inshallah, let everybody know that we're alive. I wanted to just first and foremost thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bringing us all together, um, bringing our hearts back united, and to have a very important dialogue. I want to personally thank our sponsors, the people that keep the Dope Muslim Woman podcast coming week by week. I want to shout out Jazz Handcrafted. This is a beautiful and amazing company ran by three young girls, and they hand make all of their body products. They have a beautiful body sugar scrub. They have shea butter. They have all kinds of great things. Ch check out their website in their Instagram. I want you guys to support them. That's where I get my body products. I'm a true, true believer in them. Um, so I want you to go ahead and support Jazz Handcrafted, jazzcrafted.com. Thank you to them for being an amazing sponsor. We also want to thank our sponsor, Jewel of Hijab, MashaAllah, making modesty easy and stylish. And I had a chance to kind of look a little bit deeper at the products. And I know I'm getting my hijab really soon in the mail. But this hijab, what I love about it is that it doesn't require a lot of prep or time. And for those of us that don't want to use pins and do all this stuff that, you know, we sit in the mirror for a whole half an hour to have to get our hijab right. This hijab gets you styled and looking good without much effort. It's already created and designed that way. So Jewel of Hijab, you can check them out. Thank you to our amazing, amazing sponsor. Jazakallah khair and alhamdulillah. All right, subhanAllah. Well, it is time now to welcome the ladies to the show. Assalamu alaikum, ladies. MashaAllah. Thank you guys for being here. You guys look absolutely beautiful. Are you ready to get into this? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's time. MashaAllah. <laughs> well, I am super happy and humbled to introduce the ladies to the show. I'm really, you know, just grateful to have them here. MashaAllah. I wanted to first start with um, our beloved here in all white. And um, this is Samaya. I want to welcome you guys to Samaya Muhammad. You could wave to them, Samaya. She is 19 years old. She's from New Jersey. She's a senior and she'll be graduating from college, right? This January. Yes, MashaAllah. MashaAllah, here is a game, Samaya. She loves just having open dialogue. She loves having interesting and intriguing conversations. She's just really looking forward to getting into this conversation with each and every one of you guys. I wanted to humbly welcome and thank you, Samaya, for joining the show. MashaAllah. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to have this conversation with you all. MashaAllah. And I would like to also introduce, um, I got to do this little plug, y'all. Y'all know I got to keep it real. My niece, Laina <laughs> <laughs> Shabazz, to the show. You can wave Laina to them. 
Laina is a 20 year old. She's originally from Philadelphia. She migrated to the Atlanta area when she was just a little girl. Um, she's currently right now reconsidering her career path, but leaning towards nursing. She enjoys having dialogues that pivots thinking and social change. I would like to thank and welcome Laina to the show. Thanks for having me, Auntie. <laughs> And I wanted to just say that I really appreciate Laina. She has provided so much background and layered dialogue for me to really think about. She's the one that kind of helps me sort of like pivot even this, this conversation that we're having now. So I just wanted to also just thank you, Laina, for being such a pro profound thinker. Thank you, Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> I also am delighted. Would like to welcome and introduce you to Miriam. Miriam, you can wave to the audience. Mashallah, welcome, Miriam. Miriam is a student in Dell Tech Community College. She's passionate about political science and environmental justice. She is an advocate for removing the stigma of mental health in the community and supporting teen Muslim girls. She created and led her own workshop as part of the first youth-led environmental summit in Delaware. She participated in uh, youth in government, a model United Nations, and I want to say it's auxiliary legion girls. Am I saying that right? Yes. Okay. Um, she loves spoken word painting, and she's an avid foodie. Welcome to the show, Miriam. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm really looking forward to having an intriguing dialogue tonight. Yeah. Yes. Um, Mashallah, mashallah. Well, thank you guys for being here and thank you for supporting our young people, our young ladies. We know that, first of all, I want to just start off and say this, ladies. We know so many people, okay? Once I posted this episode, so many people, especially Muslim women, were like, I feel the same way 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. Um, but I wanted to dedicate this time to you guys and really talk about this, just first have this conversation. Um, with you. And I'm going to just start right at the top. I wanted to start first and foremost with um, a survey that I read from Pew Center. And I wanted to just open up this dialogue with this. <clears throat> so there was a um, 2017 report from the Pew Research Center found that one in seven people who've never been married before don't want to get married ever. And another 27% of people aren't sure how they feel about marriage, right? A 2019 Pew report found that 17% of people think marriage um, is essential for a woman to have a fulfilling life. So only 17% felt that marriage um, was necessary for women. And we know we're going to give this context because we got people want to go ham. We understand we're Muslims. We understand the Sunnah. I recommend people to look at the uh, pre-podcast show we had yesterday with Sheikh Abdul Karim Yak Yak. He broke down marriage. He broke down the position we should have about this. So we understand that as we go into this dialogue. But I wanted to start with you, Miriam, if that's okay. I wanted to just ask you, what do you think that the, why do you think there's a growing trend um, where marriage has just become really unappealing, especially to young folks that have never been married? Yeah, well, I thank you for starting off with me. And I, I would really say um, from, I mean, not just from my own personal experience, but from my friends, right, from family, um, from what I've seen online. Um, I mean, like, I guess like the top five reasons, you know, would be fear, insecurity, you know, as well as maybe like low self-esteem. Um, there's also, you know, I had conversations and it, it also seems like for some Muslim women, there just isn't a lot of good options uh, of men for, for marriage, you know, and so like either, you know, there's this, uh, the pickings are slim, right? Like they only want to marry within their race or uh, the Muslim men that they want to marry aren't marrying Muslim women. Um, and then also like, uh, some some youth just have no interest in having long term relationships. You know, it um, mm -hmm. like commitment. You know, there's a fear of commitment as well. This is just feedback that I've been getting, and um, just a little bit of own self reflection as well. You know, we live um, in an age of like instant gratification, and so yeah. it's interesting seeing how that has an impact in our own relationships. Even as Muslims, like we are not um, unaffected by the age that we live in. And so these are just all things that I think contribute to people's um, like absolute disinterest <laughs> in, um, yeah. in wanting to be married. Yeah, powerful. I really appreciate that comprehensive answer. Um, and you're, you know, you're absolutely right. One of the, one of the, one of the main points that I've heard most is that this pickings are slim. There's not a lot of 
options. And I would just say for our suitable, compatible partners that people are finding that a lot of, especially young women um, are finding, and this sort of created a big, huge firestorm. People got really upset when I said that publicly, but I wanted to just bounce over to you, Laina. I wanted to ask you the same question. Why do you think marriage is really unappealing nowadays for young people? Why, why do you think we, they just don't want to do it? I really think society plays a big part into it. You know, they see their, you know, their favorite celebrities and they just see, you know, you know, they're not married. They stay out together forever, you know. And I just feel like it's something that needs to be taught in school or in Islamic mm. studies and stuff like that, like the courting system and how marriage is a good thing always. It can be a good thing, but, um, you know, it def society definitely plays a big role into it. You know, you don't really see any happy couples that's married mm. time, so. So I appreciate you bringing that up. There's not great models. So yeah. the reality is, is that as, and, and I'm going to pop over to you, Samantha, in a second, and want to know if you agree with this sentiment that there, we're not seeing enough great models. I think I was just talking to my producer. I hope she doesn't mind before we got on. We were having a super passionate exchange about this. And it was this idea like of just kind of seeing a lot of miserable, unhappy married folks. So Maya, is this something, a sentiment that you're finding or that young people, some of you and your, fr eight, uh, your friends are talking about, like there's just not great examples of this lifestyle being positive or happy? Yeah, I can say like from my own experience and even with my friends that it just comes with seeing how marriage can be played out and how we have an image of what marriage is. And then when we finally get into it, it's not what you see. It's not exactly like Instagram or or TikTok where, you know, people are constantly having dates so, like a man treating a woman right and a woman treating a man right. So it's constantly a thing of seeing how we model after what we think is something that's going to happen to us. When reality is, is like marriage is a big commitment of ups and downs, lows and highs. And as Miriam said before, we live in a society of instant gratification. So I just feel like once we finally take that step and complete half our dean, we have to remember that this is also a person and they're not going to be perfect. So it's just hard really realizing that your marriage is not going to be an image of happiness all the time. And I think that's what it is. People think marriage is going to be completely happy. But it's not. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that you guys are saying that. And you sound really, really balanced. I'm glad that, mashallah, like, although you guys are recognizing what you're seeing, you're also acknowledging that you know, you know, marriage has is multi-layered. You know, marriage is a beautiful thing. I think all you guys are agreeing with that sentiment. But, you know, Miriam, to be honest with you, you know, based on what you, you guys are seeing, right now and just what how marriages have been going the concern the legitimate concern that's out there that they're that you know marriage is in a place where you could be successful or you can thrive i wanted to just ask you is there currently a concern of repeating unhealthy patterns that you've that we've witnessed that young people have witnessed that we've seen modeled from other generations is there oh, is that a real concern Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, let's just, you know, put it into perspective, right? You as a young girl, you know, maybe you're nine years old and you see your parents go through a messy divorce, right? Mm -hmm. And sitting right there in that moment, you tell yourself, you know, men are a threat. Men are dangerous. You know, I don't want to be married. You know, being a wife isn't, it's no longer a, a position of, you know, being protected and being maintained and being safe. It's now the be hurt. Repeat um, that, Miriam. You cut. You cut off. You say it's the place where you get hurt. Is that what you said? Yeah, it's like the number one spot that you can get hurt, right? Mm. And it's and it's interesting because um, just to you know, like to really, um, if, if we're gonna talk about like repeating like unhealthy patterns, right? I think what we're seeing, like the decline in the interest of marriage, is um, like an effect of us constantly sweeping things under the rug. <laughs> you yes. know, I don't see a lot of uh, couples going to therapy. I don't see specifically Muslim couples, especially Black Muslim couples, right? I don't see a lot of people going to therapy. I don't see a lot of people addressing the marriage problems uh, in a collective way, right? And because um, I do see people, you know, actively trying to create and establish good, healthy, halal 
our relationships. And I don't want to discredit them in their work, right? Because I see them, I see their work in the community. And I really want to speak to there isn't like a collective uh, movement to combat um, um, us like constantly sweeping things under the rug and the, the ignorant, the like ignoring um, these marriage problems that we're facing in our community. I mean, like the marriage, the not the marriage, the divorce rate, I think is like um, one in every three people or two in every three people get divorced. And while that yeah. might not um, represent the Muslim community, we're still a part of the larger community of America, right? And so mm -hmm. a couple, probably hundreds of thousands of Muslims would be included in that statistic. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. It might even be higher because honestly, you know, we don't go through the court system. We, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of Muslims don't go through the court system. So sometimes getting married and divorce can happen quite briskly and frequently. Um, I really appreciate that. The point that you made about sweeping things under the rug, that, that's that point right there. If we can just kind of build off of that. And that's this idea that we're Muslim, we act like we don't have any issues. And also one of the things I think, you know, just as someone who's just just slightly older than you, lady, um, is that we don't talk to our young people. We don't talk to our young people. We don't talk to, we just say, you got to get married, don't fornicate. Would you guys, would you ladies agree? Right? Yeah. So what do you think, Laina, what do you think is missing in these conversations? Like what, what is missing? Like what are we not what are we not modeling? What are we not discussing with you guys to make it even a, a appealing or desirable to enter into this marriage, this union, this this way of life that frankly is a bit scary? Yeah, um, I think that we should definitely talk to our children at a young age because, you know, they're starting to think, you know, girls and boys, they like each other. It's OK, but it's definitely something that needs to be taught because only me just recently, I just started talking to my mother, you know, and started being comfortable with talking to her about, you know, dating or just this brother here, this is and that, you know, it's something that's definitely common in the community. They're trying to make it seem like it's, you know, a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like girls stay over here, boys stay over here. So now you have to children, you know, and then they're, you know, fornication and, you know, haram relationships. And it's just like everyone's just doing what they want to do. No one's really just trying to be on, you know, the right path and things like that. So do you feel like this idea of like the way sort of some in the community, like boys are bad, girls are bad, stay far away. Do you feel like that sort of has contributed to like, even the curiosity to sort yeah. of date and explore for sure because it's like why why can't i you know <laughs> like why not you know so it's definitely something that should be you know incorporated into young children you know especially in islamic schools you know if the if marriage is you know half of our dean it should be talked about in a healthy way so that the children are not you know out here fornicating and stuff like that mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And so, Maya, that's the, that's been the big thing. I'm sure you've heard of it. I'm, I'm sure you're not. Um, I'm sure you're, you're you you completely have seen some of the promos and things like that. But the main thing people are sort of fearful of by young people saying, hey, I don't know if I really want to get married is that that immediately means that everybody's fornicating. Is mm -hmm. that a real concern right now are young people preferring to date is that the real issue or it or are is it, is it more that we need to understand here i think there's a deeper issue besides fornication because as we were saying a lot of people go into marriage not really knowing their rights they don't know their right as a wife or as a husband or as a woman or as a man so when they finally do get into marriage they realize that it's just not the same like we don't know what we're getting into for real because we're only as you said before we're only told okay get married and don't fornicate don't commit zina and wow. that's completely understandable like you don't want your child to have a sin on them or anything like that but i just feel like from that as you said before they need to be taught at a young age what you're hold, held accountable for against yourself and what you're going to be holding accountable for together. So that also comes from the fact that fornication is committed due to the fact that we don't know how to handle the separation between a man and a woman. We become curious, like as most young Muslim women are when it comes to growing up and finally getting into the age of like, oh, I think he's cute. I think this, I think that, is that we're not really taught on how to really decipher the feelings of being patient mm -hmm. and realizing that Allah has, we're, we were created in pairs. So Allah has someone for us. 
Mm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> No, that right there, subhanAllah. Um, no, I, I really appreciate what you're saying. And you're right. It is it is a lot. It goes a lot deeper. And you said something powerful. And this is something that uh, Sheikh Abdul Karim Yahya said last night when we kind of did this preliminary you know, podcast to prepare for this. He was that most people don't even know their rights. You're, you're forcing, force feeding, get married, get married, get married. You don't even know what that means. You're coming in talking about how you're going to take care of me, sis, or um, what I, I don't want to do anything with you, brother, or don't try to control, whatever it is. Like we're coming in not really understanding what our role, like what our roles are, responsibilities and things like that. Mariel, I wanted to ask you about this a little bit. Do you feel as though that there is a huge deficit in the area of really teaching us what marriage truly is at it as it was practiced during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yes. <laughs> this is the second time I say absolutely yes. Yeah, the way from my mom even though she's divorced, you know, from the way she speaks about marriage, it really is a place of tranquility, uh, honor, especially as a Muslim woman, you know, and a and a safe space. You know, you're partner, your husband, your wife is supposed to be a covering for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when, you know, you look out into the world, because, you know, this is the, we're looking at the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's examples of marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking out into the world and you don't see anything that matches that. <laughs> you know, it almost seems like that's a fairy tale that happened years ago. Right. And it's, it, it's almost disheartening and you kind of wonder where things went wrong and what I am supposed to do. Um, and like, am I supposed to be now a trendsetter for healthy marriages in my community when I don't even know what that looks like? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's really, really powerful. I want to just ask you ladies straight, you know, you guys are girl, we, we all women talking here. Right. Um, and I know Lena, we had some off the script combos child. Um, as a as a as a Muslim woman woman in particular, right? And so one of the things I personally have experienced, and I, I'm here serving as a neutral. I try to be as neutral as I can, even though I'm a woman. I try to be as neutral as I can on this podcast. But one of the immediate things, you know, I experienced was like this real huge aggressive sort of fear at the idea of woman a woman deciding that she doesn't that she's not going to get married. Like there was a huge fear coming from men in particular. What's the pool like, Lena? What's out, what's going out here in these streets, child? Like we just gotta keep having honest dialogue. We gotta be honest. It's it's scary out here. It, it's, <laughs> uh -huh. it's scary. Nobody wants to do the right thing. And if you want to do the right thing, you know, they caught in the crossfires of the people that don't want to do the right thing. And it's just like it should keep on going and going um i don't know i really don't know what so how are you guys being approached because I, I mean i've been out the game for a minute so how are the young ladies being approached i'm gonna ask all you ladies so get ready i'm gonna start with you later how 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 is what's common now what's what's happening well you know people would like to get you you know um take you out, stuff like that. You know, no one's really like, well, let me get your dad's number or something. You know, the traditional way is not how it's supposed to go. And that's another thing. Is it really taught in schools how yeah. you, should, you should approach the courting, the courting system, like how it should go? It's not really, you know, so they're just going off of society like, hey, I like you. Let me let, let me take you on a date. That's really how it is. Like, you're pretty. Let me take you out and we'll see how it goes. That's, it's really just like that. You know, they'll show you, you know, what they want you to see for a couple of weeks. You know how I go. <laughs> it's weeks now. It used to be months laying in the back of the day. It's weeks now. <laughs> a couple of weeks, okay? Um, you want to, they want you to see in a couple of weeks and, you know, you either like it or you don't. And like Samaya said earlier, like, yes, we are human and we make mistakes, but I feel like that shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be like, Okay, so it feels like settling almost. It feels like settling, like, mm -hmm. hey, he's human, he makes mistakes, so I'm just gonna have to go with, you know, trying to build with this person. No, I feel like, like she said, we came in pairs, be patient, and your, your soulmate is out there, you know, it's not, it's not mm -hmm. right. Now. So, 
Okay. So I love that. Thank you, Lena, for that. So she said that it kind of feels like settling, like what's being presented, how you guys are being approached and courted. Let me get chit chat. We call it the chit, just the chit chat. Everybody want chit chat. Nobody mm -hmm. want to commit to anything. So May, are you finding the same sort of struggle and issue? I, I want to hear from you. What's really happening out here in the streets? What are your personal experiences as it relates to courting, getting married? What's the pool like? Is it, as Lena said, it's rough. It's real rough. <laughs> it's real scary out here. <laughs> Cause like, as you said before, it's like, it's also the fact of really finding someone who you're, who's on their dean, but you're also attracted to them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. is, is remembering that this person, you don't have to settle. You know, a lot, I'm always going to say a lot create us in pairs and you never know that the first person you're going to meet is going to be your pair or the next person. So I feel like at the end of the day, we shouldn't have to constantly settle for what's there because there's nothing else. You know what I mean? I feel like as women, we should be able to get what we want. You know, not all the way. Obviously, we have to compromise on things and stuff like that. But I feel like if we're going to be with somebody for years and years and years, it has to be with someone who you're going to truly love for not only but for the sake of a law, but for the sake of you, for the sake of the family that you want to build. And it just it's hard out here because it's just hard to even decipher these young men. <laughs> like even mm. with having sit downs with them, they can present themselves in one way. And then when y'all get married, shoot, starting from the first night. <laughs> everything's different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everything suddenly switches on its head. And now you're stuck in a relationship or you feel like you don't want to leave or anything like that. And I just feel like it's important to realize that we'll never know how, how a person is until we really get to know them. We'll never know that. But if you have a gut feeling and you know that hmm, this ain't right, maybe this is a law. I say, follow it. <laughs> I say, follow your gut and make sure that you're settled with someone who's going to treat you right. Always have your rights in mind and his rights in mind and always make sure that you are coming back to a loving and safe place with this person. Mm, subhanallah. Subhanallah. A sister said, I'm not going to share her name or something, but she said, I feel you, sisters. I have an unmarried 25-year-old son. I love him, but I can't recommend him to any Muslima. And I, just to add on to that, I feel like it's just a lot of moms <laughs> Who really, there's a lot of moms who call yeah. their son, who, who don't let them do anything. <laughs> they don't know nothing from nothing. <laughs> and then they get married. And then now we become the mother of a grown child when he's mm. supposed to be um, the man. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. we... <laughs> yeah so that you know and listen this isn't the brothers are going to come on for people who are watching this show so i know some things may be triggering but we have to put it all on the table and i am and, and i said that this is such an issue this is such a such a huge issue we're going to do a show just on this epidemic but we were talking about this recently where it's like this sort of decline where we're like totally bait and i'm a behavior therapist i work in schools I, my, all of my clients are boys and I see it. I, I literally can go in a classroom and see the boys and the girls and the girls are the ones that's like sitting back like this. And the boys are like, you know, can't tie their shoes. They need help. You know, something's happening. It's it's really real. Right. Um, Shake up the cream often um, mentions this book called Boys Adrift, which talks also about like some environmental things happening, things like that. Mary, I wanted to plug over to you when we talk about just what is 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 happening as it relates to just the courting process and just as a muslim woman as far as prospects wise is it really what what are the challenges what are what is it that you're personally seeing out there as it relates to the pool of young men well i'm going to have to be honest with you sabria um i am not in <laughs> i'm not involved at all i literally sit at home and i take <laughs> online marriage courses and i read books and i watch from afar <laughs> Um, as you know, a hellstorm <laughs> rolls past my house. And um, I mean, I, I tune in, you know, with my friends who have tried, you know, dating apps, who have tried, um, you know, going to an imam, going to different types of communities, you know, going through family, friends, you know, uncles, um, things like that. And so really, I mean, I'll, <laughs> this, I would just say this isn't a question that I could, um, that I could personally answer. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for being honest about that. Mashallah. Um, subhanallah. Um, sister, the sisters absolutely trust your instinct. You young ladies are spot on. 
Um, I'm divorced now and I don't want to get married anymore. Brothers want polygyny, but don't know how to be the husband for these women. Um, are you also, ladies, are you also finding that there is like this idea, which some sisters have said, where it's like, um, you're just one of many. So there's not, you're, there's not a lot of value in the courting. I mean, back in the day, I think there was a lot of effort put in courting, I, I think. Um, it, do, are you finding that that's sort of the mentality? Lena, I'll start with you. Yes, definitely. Uh, these days, these men, these men, you know, they think they are the prize. You know, not to say, not to dumb down their work or anything like that, but at the end of the day, you know, we, are, we as women are the prize and, you know, they want to put you through all these, you know, hoops and obstacles to prove yourself to them when you, like you said, are just one of many. So it just really goes down to, are you masculine enough? You know, there's no men in the home, you know, it goes back to, there's no really men in the home. So it's just the boys are being grown up by their mothers, coddled and babied. So there's no masculine men. They're not masculine. So you you can't bring out your feminine energy and, you know, be the women in their eyes that they want type of thing. But they're not the man that you want. So it's just like, you know, it's like this tug of war. Like, you know, it's it's a struggle. It's a real mm, struggle. SubhanAllah. It's a wow. Wow. MashaAllah. Um, I appreciate that. I appreciate that converse, that that sort of um, adding that layer as it relates to the feminine and masculine. And we know both as women, even as it relates to our femininity, it's no secret as well that we're moving more and more to the masculine. That's also a challenge. And I've heard young men also speak of that. And then there's also, you know, there's a decline in masculinity as well, um, which, you know, like I said, that that's that's proven. The research is really there. And then when we're not operating in that our correct energy space, we see all of these sort of problems and issues. SubhanAllah. I wanted to ask, um, Miriam, I'm going to jump right up to you. Um, how, like, there was something brought up to me by Malika, and also this was a concern by some young brothers that they mentioned as it relates to the role of finance and economics. And just that, you know, you know, times are kind of, you know, rougher and rougher these days. And these are things that are also being considered as people consider going into a marriage. How much would you say finances, the role of finances in money? Some women are opting not to marry because perhaps what is being offered is is not a uh, hundred percent maintenance just because of the times and the challenges these are just things that i'm hearing how much do you feel like finances and economics play a role in us not wanting to get married specifically as black people yeah well i would say i see a rising trend in a 50 50 relationships i have no idea where that came from and um a lot of women are turned off by it right and and to be honest 50 50 relationships doesn't come from islam at all like it really is 100 zero you I'm know talking about finances 50 50 finance <laughs> maintenance yeah, 50 -50 right 50 finances yeah like mm -hmm. money like you know i'll take care of you know these bills you take care of that bills and together mm -hmm. like the whole thing works um but that's just not what a lot of women are looking for i wouldn't personally want that either and but um i mean if we're gonna look just based on the economy like the cost of living has risen in america you know and you can no longer get by comfortably on single you know uh parent or or like single um uh, income. spouse income right mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. it it may come to a point where both the woman and you know her husband are going to have to work depending on how much you know either of you make or you know all different kinds of factors it's just coming to a point now where we need both hands on deck and so you know i can't blame brothers for being really picky and selective when it comes to finances because like it's like the water is rising and we have to do all of our best to, to stay afloat yeah mm, that's a that's a really merciful point i really appreciate you bring it because we often look at it from one lens and we look like well this is what islam says but you also brought in like kind of what's happening and the pressure that people the brothers are feeling which they've personally shared that with me kind of off script and different surveys I, i've conducted um Lena, i just wanted to ask you as it relates to finances as it relates to this sort of 50 50 thing and some people are even saying it's not even 50 50 sometimes it's 100 zero people looking to be taken care of is this pretty common amongst young people yes and no. Okay. If you, you know, married young, it should be 
not it should be, but if, you know, we're just getting our lives together, growing and building together, 50-50 is okay. But once you get to a certain age, you know, it needs to be 100-0, like, completely. Because that's just what the men did back then. I feel like it should be carried on now, but it's, there were no men, <laughs> there's no men in the home. So it's just like, why should I pay for this? You have mm -hmm. your money. You should be able to pay for this. You know, you should take me out on dates, you know, stuff like that. The men. Are people really they, asking to be taken out on dates? They do say that, you know, they do. They um, are. Like, like you pay for it. And yeah. It. Um, yeah. So it's, it's interesting. Okay. Okay. And so Maya, when it comes to this, the same question for you, as it relates to finances and economics, how much of this is playing a role in just the decision not to get married? I just feel like, as you said before, there's just been an increase in everything. You know, there's just been an increase in everything. So it's going to be hard just relying on one income in a household. But I just feel like people have to remember marriage and Islam is not always about equality is about equity it's about realizing that you know sometimes i can't give you 20 30 sometimes i can give you 50 60 sometimes it can be level playing field but at the end of the day in a slam um his money is his money his money is my money and my money is my money <laughs> so it's just like you know you gotta remember you're supposed to provide he's supposed to give what he can but at the end of the day when it comes to finances things are going to be tough, but if you can, that's why it's hard for men to get married sometimes because they're not at the place financially to really take care of another person because they have to also mm -hmm. take care of themselves. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? They have to realize that if you want to be married and get taken seriously, you have to have some, some something going for you besides, you know, oh, I was highly recommended. You know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> you know, you, my father said he was a good brother. I was like, well, is he making a good income to be a good brother? You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just like, it's just different nowadays because money is something that's very important in marriages. And they have, people have to realize that if you want to have a lasting marriage, you need to learn how to be able to take care of me in the house. <laughs> right. So yeah. I love that you said, Samaya, that there is an the equity is important and in the idea that you know sometimes we're going to be working in this together there's an understanding there we're building together but as long this is what i'm thinking i'm hearing you saying you could correct me but as long as it's understood what islam says as it relates to finances and maintenance in a marriage is that what i'm hearing you say that we can yeah. be in this together but okay go ahead yeah, like what I'm saying is, is that people have to remember the Islamic ruling when it came to taking care of and having and giving the rights to the wife is that she's getting taken care of by the man now. So it's just like she's not supposed to work if it she, if she really has to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The man is really supposed to be the one to help provide in the household. But if it comes to a point where we both can work together and build up a life where eventually he can just take care of me in a way where I may not have to work or he might not even have to work either, but he's still taking care of what he needs to be taken care of. That's when I'll be like, yeah, I'll, I'll still help. I'm not going to sit here and be like a pretty princess and not <laughs> do what yeah. I have to do. Like in this type of economy, but at the end of the day, the Islamic ruling is, is that, He's supposed to take care of the person. He's supposed to take care of the woman. And if he can't do that, then he's not supposed to be married right now. Yeah. If he can't even handle his own finances. And it sounds like mindset is the concern. And I think I heard, Miriam, you're saying that it's more of the issue of, like you said, this idea of 50-50. Like, it's a mindset. Like, that's what it is. Not that, okay, considering the economy, what's happening, we're going to work together together. But knowing mindset wise, finances is the husband is the husband's responsibility. The woman maintains the home and she knows her roles and her responsibilities. And just to add, put this out there so that, you know, just as young ladies, are you are you also aware of your responsibilities when you come into a marriage? I'm gonna start with you, Miriam. Oh, absolutely. Right. <laughs> yeah, for the third time. I think tonight. we should just say yeah, that. Just say absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think um, I mean you hear all the time growing up as a woman, you know, what, what a wife's supposed to do for her husband, how, you know, what it's like being a good woman, uh, what that entails, you know, um, how the, you know, um, female companions of the Prophet were good women, how the wives of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, how they, like, I hear all the time what is expected of me in a marriage. Um, I just rarely hear, um, like, what's expected of men in marriages other than, like, 
providing and maintaining. Like I hear nothing about like emotional uh, intelligence. Mm. I hear nothing about emotional, like, like being um, like also being like a, a safety net and a safeguard for me, not just from like the outside world, but from yourself. <laughs> mm. And, you know, cause that's, that's always overlooked, right? It's always, okay. As long as, you know, bills are paid and there's a house to live in, um, you know, and, you know, we have kids and we're good. No, I, I think there needs to be a little bit more expected of men. And it's kind of hard to say that because um, already, like, it seems like, I, I don't want to be general, but it seems like the majority isn't even matching up to the bare minimum. And I don't want to add, like, more pressure, but because um, it's cruel to say that's not enough, right? <laughs> but it's, it's, it's just sometimes the reality of the situation, like, um, that's that's all I mean. No, I didn't and, and mashallah, like mashallah is so merciful. I'm so glad that you guys are here. Um, because I, I think we just need to talk plain like this. And this the idea, because in the Quran, when you hear the, the instructions to the men, as well as the instructions to the women as well, but you hear this idea of treat them kindly, you know, don't part with them in kindness. Th this is a direct instruction. Yet we emphasize, as long as you pay in the bills, like that's primarily the, but as a woman, I have to be safe. I have to be secure. And I think that I love that you brought that up. And that's actually an explicit commandment, right? And so, um, mashallah, that's that's beautifully stated. Laina, I just as a young woman, um, do you feel like you're able to, or or do you feel like, you know, women, women your age are at a place where they at least understand their role? Because the brothers are saying, y'all don't understand y'all role or place. If that, the, the ladies is- We ladies are all track. Very much, okay? It, they just think just because they have to, you know, pay, like she, Miriam said earlier, like just paying the bills is not enough. You know, we need you there emotionally and a safety net. So we, we, we know our role, you know, as women, we know our role, but for the right man, for the right man, you have to know your role and do what you want to do. Like, I'm not doing housewife things for a man who, you know, is narcissistic or controlling just because he's paying, you know, the bills. Mm. You, know? Mm. you so have to be safe. You have, yeah. If you're not feeling safe. Why should I do household housewife duties? You know, mm. you starting stuff, Lena. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, this is a layer of conversation. Samaya, um, um, what do you have to say as it relates to that, just as a woman coming in? A lot of brothers are saying women don't want to submit now. You know, they want, don't want to be obedient and they expect all this stuff. Obedient. What do you have to say about that? It's hard to be obedient to a man who isn't obedient to his Lord. You know, it's hard to submit to someone who doesn't even submit to the first person we're supposed to submit to. I can't give you your rights if you can't give me my rights. You know what I mean? I can't, like that's when the whole marriage is going to be nulled because at the end of the day, you're not even exercising what you're supposed to be giving to me. I would love to submit to a man. I would love to sit here and have, be safe around you, be soft we around you. It. We love it. But, it's natural. Right. But I feel like with men nowadays, they don't know, <laughs> they don't know emotional intelligence. They don't know when to care when and when not to actually care. They don't know when to drop a situation or, or to actually pick it back up. And sometimes even with women too, like sometimes they don't even know how to hold their tongue. You know what I mean? There's been, there's cases where, friend groups are put against each other because one person is going off saying one thing and another person is saying some, something else, then they both get into your head. And it, it leads to, like, even more fitna in the marriage. You know what I mean? So I just feel like if you want me to give you your rights, you have to give me my rights first. If you want me to be able to love you the way you want to be loved, you have to love me the same way. I can't just give you all of me and you don't even give me any of you. You know what I mean? They're not valuing women, though. The boys, these Sorry? Are valuing Sorry. Women. they don't, you know, they see us as, you know, a possession, something to have. That's why she's like, you value me, I'll value you. But they don't see us as um, something to Human value. beings. Yes, yeah. Human, basically, like, they don't see us as human beings. Like, she's supposed to take care of my household and have my children, and I'm going to pay the bills while I'm out here doing whatever. But there's no, like she's a woman and you know just loving her emotionally stimulate her mind emotionally you know it's nothing like yeah. it. it's not 
I was I was going to add from that is like sometimes men just get married just to be able to have someone there. You know what I mean? They just get married to just be like, oh, I have a wife. I have someone to go home to. You know what I mean? They see us as more of an accomplishment. You know what I mean? Something, a goal that they reach, which is nothing wrong with having a goal of getting married. But if you're just treating me as, oh, she's the wife, <laughs> you know what I mean? She's going to do everything in the household that she needs to do. She's going to love me. She's going to do that. It just gets to the point of like, do you see me as more of my, t- do you see me just as my title or as the person that you're supposed to be in love with? You know what I mean? And treat yeah. well. Um, Go ahead, Miriam. Yeah. I, I just wanted to speak to something because what you said about um, like submission was perfect. Like I, I hear a lot of um, like, you know, when you go online or like when you read comments or like even just talking to like Muslim friends, like, you know, Muslim men are demanding, you know, submission. And I, I don't think there's really anything wrong with that. However, it seems like it's less about submission coming from like, I'm obeying a law. You know, we're doing this together. We're doing this to get to Jenna. I want you to submit to me because I want you to be rewarded, right? It seems more so I want you to submit to me so I can do whatever I want, <laughs> you know? And it's, it's, and then it becomes like, so is marriage just about power and control to you? Is yes. that what I am? Just a tool right. to further your own ambitions in this world? And it seems like, you know, like I'm I'm really just, I'm not there as a person. I'm kind of just there as an asset. And if the asset is, you know, dysfunctional, throw the asset away. <laughs> and that's the only reason why submission is being demanded because it's useful as an asset to men. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love what you said. I have no problem with submitting. Right. But are you worth my submission? Because Allah certainly is. Right. Mm. I get unconditional love from Allah and I return unconditional love back. Where is this unconditional love that deserves, you know, this type of submission that Allah is commanding Muslim women to, to give? Mm. <laughs> just, just wow. mm-hmm. You guys. Wow. Subhanallah. SubhanAllah, may Allah, may Allah help us, I mean, but I really appreciate this dialogue. You know, young people say things that many of us are, are really... <laughs> afraid to say um you know subhanallah this is a big big issue as it relates and we know we're not and we know that there's issues on both sides i think we would all acknowledge that there are issues on both sides and some women sometimes what brothers don't understand is that some women have been through so much beat down like for some of the older ones that yeah their obedience does become a trigger word not knowing that submission is just natural within the, your feminine essence it comes natural with your femininity Mm. You get, but in order for me to operate my femininity, I, you know, if I'm going to be with, I have to have the polar masculinity, right? I, you know what I mean? Like it, it, that, that's just the way that it, the, the way that it goes. So I appreciate this um, phenomenal, phenomenal dialogue and making sure that we're really layered. I know our brothers are behind the scenes, mashallah. So we not want to stop here, you guys. I know some of the brothers, I see a lot of women commenting. Sometimes the brothers, when we go here, the brothers get quiet. But it's okay. We're about to turn the tables. Ladies, I just wanted to just kind of jump around before we kind of take you ladies off. Were there any last comments, anything that was missed? I want to make sure that you guys, your points are completely heard. Why I don't want to get married. Any Um, final points? I would just say, like, you know, Allah truly knows best for all of us. And I truly just am glad that we are amongst a lot of intelligent women who know what they want. And by the grace of Allah, we're all going to get that. And hopefully, I don't want to get married right now. But if the right person come along, I'm going to be able to get married. And hopefully, we all can too. Inshallah. I mean, Allahumma, I mean. I mean. Um, just to add on to what she said brilliantly, you know, it, it would really be, is someone worth the risk of being married to, right? It's not, do I want to get married or not? It's, is someone worth the risk of being married? Am I going to meet someone who's worth the risk of being married? Wow. SubhanAllah. Thank you, Miriam. And Lena, any final thoughts? No, I'm good. Okay. Alhamdulillah. You put it all out there on the table. Man, I will bless you, ladies. Oh, my gosh, the audience is going crazy. Thank you so much. I'm just going to end with this statement. Um, The sister said, I'm so impressed with these young women. May Allah bless you all with good. Mashallah. Um, One brother said, sounds like conditional femininity. Either a woman is feminine or she's not. Maybe people don't understand the polarity of both. Okay, Jazakallah, Kaiden. May Allah bless you guys. I'm going to ask that um, our producer remove the ladies from the the screen. (laughs) 
<laughs> Mashallah. We're going to take a very quick uh, commercial break to thank our sponsors. Our highlighted sponsor for this episode is Jewel of Hijab once again. And Mashallah, this time, and Malika, give me a thumbs up in the backstage. You, you're ready for, okay, cool. Um, this time we're going to do just a very quick um, tutorial of Jewel of Hijab. I want you guys to see how this hijab works, okay? Because I know I'm talking about it, but we got to see it for ourselves. So we literally have a 60 second um, commercial break and we're coming right back with our brothers. Enjoy. Allah, that's fly. Make sure, make sure you guys go and grab your Jewel of Hijab um, from jewelofhijab.com. Follow them on Instagram. Just support them, mashallah. We want to really support our businesses. Um, even if you you know can't grab a hijab, support them, follow them, spread the word, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. I want to make sure our brothers are on screen. Are we here? We have our um, brother Yakin. We're going to call for him, inshallah. Um, hopefully, inshallah, um, we can have our young Lena reach out to him to come on screen, but I am ready for our dear brothers. Okay. We got Yakin. I think he's here. Malika. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you guys doing? I feel very good. Good, good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You, you had those, those young sisters on there, man. One <laughs> thing about you. the youth. Um, I mean, they were really dropping some heavy jewels, definitely for a uh, older brother like myself. They were really saying things that probably most of us may be afraid to say. Mm -hmm. Yaki, yeah, you all right over there, bro? <laughs> I'm all good. I'm all good. All right. All right. You like being shocked. I, I, I'm glad I, I got you, man. Hold on, Mr. He's like, he in shock over there. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, mashallah. Thank you so much, brothers, for being here. Thank you for adding another layer to the show. I want to introduce you guys here today, mashallah. I'm so glad to be surrounded back with family. Alhamdulillah. I'm going to first introduce um, our young brother here, mashallah. I'm um, brother Yakin. Assalamu alaikum. You're going to be repping right hard. You you heard your, um, your peers now, Yakin. I, you know, I don't know if you knew they was going to be going there, but we're going to talk about it, inshallah. Okay, so Yakin is born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. He graduated from the esteemed Worthy Muhammad High School in 2021. Upon graduation, Yakin took his talents to Georgia State University, where he is currently majoring in business economics. Yakin enjoys sports, service in the community, contributing to his family's business, and more. He inspires to own a chain of restaurants called Is It Yak Shack? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. I need you to go ahead and um, what do you have to do for the name? It's not patent. What is it called, Imam Idris? It's called a. When you when you own the name, copyright. Huh? Copyright into my copyright. Oh, yeah, you need to go. You need to go trademark that name. Um, yeah. Welcome trademark to the show. Like, there you go. Thank you for being here. No problem. Thank you for having me. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. All right, and I would like to introduce um, our esteemed Imam, mashallah. This is um, Imam Idris is returning back. He was there for our live show in Philadelphia, but he is a Philadelphia native. He currently serves as the resident Imam of Mashhad Law, the Center for Human Excellence, located in West Oak Lane section of Philly. 
Um, Master Law is one of the largest Muslim congregations in the city. I just had the pleasure of visiting it last week, mashallah, and it's an amazing, amazing masjid. He was recently appointed by Governor Tom Wolf to serve on the Governor's Commission for African American Affairs, where he works to ensure that state government is accessible and accountable by advising the governor of policies, procedures, legislation, and regulations. Idris, Idris is currently an IT director for the city of Philadelphia. In this role, he serves as chief technology advisor. He also serves on the board of Ceasefire PA, whose mission is to end the epidemic of gun violence across the Commonwealth of the country. He is also a member of the Multi-Faith Neighbors Network, facilitating and participating in interfaith dialogue amid, amid increasing um, understanding and cooperation to address the common challenges of faith-based communities. He's also an avid filmmaker. He directed and produced Ask a Muslim, a web series that addressed the stereotypes and misconceptions of Muslims in America from a Black American perspective. Welcome, Imam Adris. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me once again. I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to uh, share. MashaAllah. And I have my returning colleague who, I, I, um, Brother Jihad, you should be really upset with me because I, I don't have your bio in front of me. You've been on the show okay. so many times. I should have it it's memorized. Okay. <laughs> um, but welcome back, Brother Jihad. He's my colleague. He's also a fellow um, radio host of Living Islam Today, which has been on the air for how long, Iman, um, Brother Jihad? Uh, over 25 years. Over 25 over years. 25 so years. a lot of times, you know, he's the veteran in the game. He's he's the one that often, <laughs> you know, make sure don't listen on the podcast, don't go too far left. Um, no. in this, um, and so, mashallah, in addition to that, you are a police officer, right? I am a, a deputy sheriff officer here in the city of Philadelphia. City of Philadelphia. I'm dealing with a lot of um, issues of our community, been amongst so many communities. These are my Philadelphia brothers, so I've known them since... I remember them since I was, you know, little running around community. So mashallah, welcome you guys to the show. Okay, we're going to get right into it. Okay, so you guys got to hear, right? The sisters' perspectives, mashallah, may Allah bless them. And I wanted to ask, Yakin, are you okay if I start with you, which is asking the basic question of like this concern about not wanting to get married? I really wanted to hear it from a young man's perspective of why, what's the concern? What are young men saying? Well, for starters, let me just have this out there. I, I'm completely 100% uh, want to get married. Like, I see that. I'm <laughs> so, anything come, that comes out later on throughout this podcast, like, you know, we'll make it known. I got know. you. I'm in some note. All right, for starters, I feel like the trend, the, um, the chain of not wanting to get married really stimulates from the households, right? So, you have a number of households who really, don't really show how marriage is supposed to be viewed. They, they, they don't they don't teach it like the sisters were saying, don't teach it at all. Like you're just supposed to wake up and oh I'm gonna get married. That's just not gonna happen. Especially if you are in the dunya for real. So mm -hmm. it's the society today and then your household. And especially if you don't have a, a mother and father who are together today, then you don't really see the benefits of marriage. All you see is the wrongs that come out of marriage. Mm -hmm. So then you got that. Then you have how society looks at marriage, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like the terms, the phrases, even how you even speak about marriage. Like a lot of people, when they say they're getting married, they use the, the term, I'm getting tied down. So it's like two sides of the same coin. To, to be tied down, you know, you're holding your roots. That can be one of the good parts. Like you have foundation. You have you got growth from being tied down type stuff. You feel me? And yeah. then when you being tied down, it's like being held back in a sense. Mm -hmm. Like you're, they, they're they weighing you down from your true self or to be free mm. in a sense. So mm. it's how people look at marriage as a total and they get the ideas of like, well, if I'm being held back, if I'm being taken out the game, then why should I do it? And that's what all of why I'm not, I'm not gonna have, I'm not gonna get married for it. If I'm gonna be taking out the game, I'm not gonna be able to be able to be my true self or get to the point in life where I'm trying to get. If marriage is not gonna help me, why should I do it? Wow. No, that's powerful. That, that from a man perspective, I, I could honestly see or understand this whole perspective of being tied down. It kind of taking you off of your goals, your game, because now you got to consider take care of another person. Is that is that sort of the thought or just having to take care of a, 
a woman, the kids and all of that, taking that off of where the track that you guys want to go as men. And I know not you in particular, but this is what you're hearing. Is that what you're yes. saying, Akeem? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So nah, it's, it's okay if I give my a little take of my, like, how I see Please. Little, Please. Yeah. So for me personally, I feel like, so I, um, I know for sure it's in the Quran, right? I can't give you the um, the direct quotation from it, but it's like paraphrasing. It was like, men are put here to maintain and provide for females. So if that's your job, then you're not really a man unless you maintain and provide for a female. Mm. So if you're not doing those things, then what are you? Ooh, okay. whoa, whoa. Uh oh, yeah, King. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you so much for that perspective. I wanted to jump over to you, brother Jihad. Uh, I know we talked a little bit about, you know, even why coming on this show is important because I know you're a brother that, you know, has been married. You you got married young, right? Or, no, a little young. <laughs> Define young. I, ca I came right into Islam um, 27, 28 okay. years ago. And the words from the brother after I took Shahada was, all right, now you got to get married. Right. I'm like, what do you mean? I got to get married. I got to give up, you know? And that's all, <laughs> that's all you heard in the community. You know, when that's what we preach today. You right. just took Shahada or you're just, you're, you're freshly out of a divorce and they're saying, you got to get married. You got to get married. And I have, there has to be a healing process, first of all. You know, yes. if you're just coming into Islam, I think you need to learn more about your faith before you run and jump and get married. I, I get the whole understanding of that we should be married, but also understand that both the brother and the sister have to know what their obligations are uh, to Allah, to this deen, and to themselves as a new convert coming into the religion. Mm, subhanAllah, that's a really that's a really big point. And actually, even on the sister side, they also a lot of sisters spoke to that same experience. The first thing said after before even learning how to pray is you got to get married. And this idea of and like I, I, I know you follow you saw the real on Instagram. I don't know if you saw the response mm -hmm. where people are really, really upset about this idea of people waiting to get married or maybe not getting married immediately equates to like fornication. What do you have to say about that, Bridget, as a, as a man? Because I want to just, from a man's perspective, this is a really valid well, concern, right? It's, it's a rough, not me, I'm not married now. So mm -hmm. it's a very rough situation, not being married and going through time you entertain different people for the purpose of marriage not looking for uh friendship or conversation just for the sake of that and, you know myself i'm not looking for that um you, you re repeat the question again because i want to make sure that so I'm, I'm going to know the of is this yeah is the concern about if people are not getting married or even waiting like you said you're i guess you're in this stage of looking for a partner, I'm assuming, or courting potentially, is this this sort of idea that if they're not married, they're fornicated. I think someone even said that under the comments, just from 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 the male perspective. You know, and, and the, you know, the, the, the ironic thing about that, that's not really always the case. You know, right. we like to think the, the best for brothers that aren't married. Um, that's not always it, you know. People can be really taking time to heal, to get themselves together from whatever it was that they came out of. Some of us may have came out of an engagement, a courtship that was like hell. And you need time to get your mind together. You need time to really get yourself together from what you just came out of because that situation, and I'm speaking for myself, if, mm -hmm. if I can, if you allow me to, the situation of courtship that I was involved with was it was it was good. It started out good, but towards the middle and the end, I, I found that Allah saved me. Allah saved me from what what I want to call a bullet. I dodged a, a cannon, if I can say that. So you know, everybody's not fornicating. 
Right. There is, you know, we're in the process of really just taking an, a moment, an opportunity to get ourselves connected financially, to get ourselves connected back spiritually, um, to, 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 to come at peace with yourself and to look at your previous situations, your previous marriages and, and say where you don't want to go wrong the next time around. Mm, SubhanAllah, I appreciate that. Imam Idris, I wanted your perspective just as a leader and as a young imam, a youthful imam, mashallah, that probably has a bit of a pulse of what's happening in the young community. Um, what are you finding? Why are brothers? Because honestly, I talked to my dad about this and he was saying, Sabrina, it's not the sisters. The brothers are, don't want to get married. Like y'all yeah. thinking it's the ladies. The ladies are vocal, but the brothers, the men don't want to get married. Are you finding this to be true? And what are you, what are you finding as the reason for this? Yeah. So, uh, first of all, Bismillah. Um, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulullah. Um, Yes, I mean, it is more of a male um, reluctance, and I would say because the responsibility of taking care of yourself and for a wife is going to be on a young man. And if a young man, you know, listens to some of the young ladies and how they speak about, you know, not wanting to go 50-50 and you got to have it all together, you know, and how and how even in the culture, Mm. Uh, men are called scrubs and they can't do mm. this and you broke. So the negative connotations of a man who cannot provide are, you know, you know, are dastardly enough <laughs> for a man to say, I'm not going to try this until I'm absolutely ready. Uh -huh. um, and um, so that's one aspect of it. And, mm -hmm. and I think with this generation, um, you know, you know, this younger generation grew up during a time of uncertainty. They lived through uh, a previous recession. We're in a recession right now. Um, and everything, nothing is tethered to anything right now, right? Like, like the largest um, hotel chains, Airbnb, they own no hotels. Mm -hmm. right. uh, biggest uh, a, a, a taxi uh, company is Uber and they own no cars, right? So um, so we're in this, um, this space now in society where uh, where people are not making long-term commitments. They don't want contracts. Mm -hmm. They don't want uh, to be tied down. Um, and the responsibility of being a husband is a serious thing. And if you have, if you don't have um, reassurance um, and um, a partner that can grow with you and you feel that you can work with, um, mm -hmm. you're right. You are going to delay responsibility. You're going to hold that off until you possibly, you know, you know, can get to a better position. Um, and the average 20 something year old man, you know, can barely take care of himself. Um, you know, I did get married when I was 23 and mm -hmm. I was in the same position. I, I could barely take care of myself. Um, but, you know, we went forward anyway, you know, uh, you know, being the lad and, you know, it said this be lad <laughs> and when they right. did it, right. It was, it was my level of faith then. But, um, but yeah, I, you know, uh, um, you know, the struggle is real. I think what the sisters are saying is, you know, to a certain extent is quite accurate, um, but they have to understand that the way that they're speaking is scaring okay. off a lot, a lot of men from engaging them. Right. Uh -huh. The sisters, the sisters who are like, listen, we're both young. You know, I'm just getting out of college. You're just getting out of college. We're both starting our careers. Uh, let's 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 make a go of it together. Um, and 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 they negotiate, a, a, you know, a situation where they both can live with it. Um, still understanding, again, that. Your responsibility is one thing. My responsibility is something else, right? And we're working towards those goals, right? I hear mm. a lot about how, you know, men are not paying all the bills and all that kind of stuff, right? But women aren't cooking all the meals either, right? Women are not, you know, there are men, you know, my father's generation didn't change diapers, right? I changed diapers, but my, my father <laughs> don't change diapers, right? So men are, men are doing more of women's work, too. Um, most of the men I know, and and through many of the studies that I've uh, researched, African American men, um, you know, spend more time with their children than any other ethnic group in America, um, and do more of the raising of their children, even if they're not necessarily in the household. Um, mm. That's a, I mean, that's the statistic that that would shock you based upon the stereotypes that are put out there about um, about black men. But um, mm -hmm. so, so those are just some of the things I, I don't want to take all the time, but um, yeah, no, I have a lot of thoughts here, yeah, mm -hmm. no, that I appreciate that, I do appreciate that, and that's that's the layer 
that we want to ask. Yakin, is it is, is it true? It, could you can you relate to what Imam Idris said just as a young brother? And I mean, you obviously you're in college, you got business plans, you know, you got goals, but is it a bit of a turnoff the way the women talk about, you know, you better provide your money, my money. Ak. Is that a bit of a turnoff for you or is that a concern? Well, for me personally, it's like but before we like me personally, I'd be like, that seems like a challenge because like I like challenges. That's how I see everything. I'm like, okay, so you're telling me I can't do this, but well, I'm gonna go do it. And then tell me, like, you see what I'm saying? That's yeah. how I see everything. But for other men, I can see how it'd be like, well, if they're gonna beat me before I get down, before I get up, then you see, while I'm down, before I can get up, then what's the point of doing it? Because a lot of people, they want the end product before and skip all the first second and third stage, this is what the final stage. Right. Right, right. So are you finding that ladies are expecting young brothers to have it all together? Or do you see a mentality where women are willing to kind of work with with, with you guys as you guys build? What mentality are you seeing? It's definitely, it's either you have it right now or you don't have it at all. Ah, mm. I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Jihad, you want to chime into this a little bit? <laughs> oh, oh, you you know, I'm biting at the bullet. I saw so, you. <laughs> so, so you, you have Imam Idris. Now, Imam, when you got married, you said you were 23, correct? Yes. I'm sure you had the support of mom and dad and your family helping you in your transition of being married. Yes. Now, I, I think today, a lot of the families a lot of the young sisters and young brothers may not have the support. I know one particular young brother, I won't mention his name, uh, watched him grow up in the match kid. And I just found out about a year ago, he got married. And I was like, wow, he moved out. And they was like, no, he lives at home with us, with his wife, we made space for him. So in a young brother situation, who's maybe 20 years old, there's no way in the world he can take care of, he ain't even taking care of himself, let alone another human being so and another thing that as a middle-aged brother who's not married you find that you hear that a lot they're saying i want to be fully maintained or we can't even entertain the conversation i get that whole concept of that you know women should be maintained by men i get that but also at the same time i think building and working together that's probably another topic. I might get you in trouble by saying this one. Hey, come <laughs> I on, think, you know, I'm already in trouble. I, 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 <laughs> I think people working together, and and, mm -hmm. and, I, and I say that for the sole purpose of the price of gas right now here in the city of Philadelphia is four dollars and eighty nine cent a gallon. That's five bucks, yeah. Yes, five. Let's just run off five dollars. I got a big truck out there and That's i know good. that truck is my responsibility but when you start thinking about you want to take your wife to hodge you want to take your wife to umrah well i work for the city of philadelphia <laughs> so my salary isn't yeah. that where you know i got ten thousand dollars for me and i got ten thousand dollars for you so i think that there needs to be some type of understanding and I think these dialogues, these conversations need to be had when people sit down at the table and they're discussing marrying one another. Mm. Yeah, true. yeah, yeah, subhanAllah. I wanted to ask you, Imam Idris, about a mentality that the ladies mentioned and the growing concern of um, some of the young brothers maybe being held a little bit too close to the chest by mama, fatherless homes, um, this sort of this this sort of trend that we see, which contributes to maybe a mentality of wanting to be taken care of completely, or not really wanting, like you said, don't want to really commit, can't settle down, can't get focused. Yeah. Um, I wanted to just ask you about that, as far as what you're finding as the problem there, and are there any recommended solutions for some of these, these concerns these ladies have? Yeah, I mean, I feel for the young ladies. So, you know, I'm 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 gonna preface my statements by by stating I, I have two young daughters. I'm I'm raising two two young queens, right? One is eleven, one is six. That's I right. want them to be able to marry a man that can take care of them. You know, uh, not just financially, but emotionally, physically, and every way that a man should maintain a wife, right? Um, I do see a decline in you know masculinity, uh, manhood. 
in, in, in some ways. Um, and it's because I think of societal shifts and, and changes. Um, but what I will say is this, is that, um, you know, um, because we have these fatherless homes and, mm -hmm. and, and we don't have um, families that are staying together, right? Um, you know, some of the young men are missing out on, uh, you know, good modeled masculinity, um, measured masculinity, men, men who um, see the responsibility, even if you may not, you know, be at a point where you can fully take care of it, you understand that that's your goal in life. Um, and, and you assist in ways, um, you know, that, um, that, that, that make her uh, burden lighter. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, I think that's part of it, but I think again, um, it's the fact that men, right. I think one of the sisters said it very, very clearly, which was, um, you know, seeing women as just a possession, yeah. you know, just a means for legal sex, right. Or yeah. moral sex, right. Or, or just a means, you know, just to uh, like, a, you know, have something right. Um, men don't understand, uh, you know, that, uh, that, you know, the best provision in this life is a good wife. Um, and, um, when a when a man doesn't have a vision for his life, mm. when he doesn't have a goal for his life, right? It's mm. easy to to dismiss a woman or dismiss the importance of marriage, right? Marriage and having a good bond and having a good partner for your life is setting up the foundation as a springboard for your career, springboard for your social life, springboard for your 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 vision and goal in life. And many times you know, men linger in this period of, you know, jumping from woman to woman or or not getting uh, committed to anyone because they really have no 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 collective vision um, for their life. And they don't have anything to call anybody else to. Right. So um, so having a vision beyond just your personal satisfactions and desires is really key to that, because that then requires that you build with somebody. It requires right. that you have a partner. You know, and you build a, a strong family, which helps build strong communities, right? But if we don't care about community, if we don't care about having our own schools, care about having our own businesses, care about protecting our neighborhoods and communities, if if we don't have visions like that, if, yes. if we're just about you know you know what's for dinner, then right, you don't need a wife, bro. You should just sit 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 this one out, right? Um, and the brothers who got vision yeah. and 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 want to build something. Those are those are the ones that need somebody by their side to help them, you know, uh, you know, craft a, a, a future for our community. So that's that's really what I see, and 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 that's part of what you know my my teaching is, and you know, and it's continued from the community that I come from, which is that you know the fully realized life is is community life. Our prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he was a prophet in Mecca. Uh, and, and talk to people and got a, 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 a small, uh, you know, following. But when he transitioned to Medina and established mm -hmm. the masjid and then established the society, that's when Islam became, yeah. you know, a force that could transform a society that could really be a positive thing. Right. So that's really vision. what I'm seeing here. You know, vision, you lack gotta, of vision. You get to there. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Jazakallah khairan for that. MashaAllah. Yakina, I want to pop over to you because one of the things the ladies sort of emphasize, and I wanted to just sort of ask you about this idea of like kind of safety, like feeling, wanting to not just, you know, like you said, okay, the brother has vision. He can come in and say, I'm going to take care of things or I got you, sis, financially. But do you feel like there there is an issue as it relates to men looking at women as possessions and also just this element of not being developed enough to like be an emotional safe place for a woman. Is this a real concern? Do you feel like young men need to do better with this? What, what's your opinion on this? When they talked about just wanting to feel safe from, from their husband, with their husbands. Well, for starters, I feel like a lot of people nowadays are emotionally closed. Mm. Like, we're not expressive enough. So even if they if they want to be like emotionally available to her, their husband or like, you know, where it's like an actual bond, that requires everyone opening up and we just don't trust enough. There's not enough trust. So yeah. I feel like that'd be the main problem. Are, are men not trusting? Are, is, are you saying that on, on, on the male side that it's a lack of trust? 
It's both sides. It okay, both sides. both sides. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like it's just like a scary like you're scared, and then it's the trust behind the scaredness, like, and yeah. then you got the commitment building up too. So you got all those three things working together, and it's just like you're just there, yeah. you just shut down. And you know what happens is people have to find ways to cope. You have defense mechanisms, all, and that's how toxicity brews. You know, it starts with this place where people, you know, this lack of safety. And then from a lack of safety, people, the breakdown of connection happens. People don't have a good sense of belonging. I don't belong here. And that's when you see sort of these dysfunctional trends. So I really appreciate you for acknowledging. And you're right, it's on both sides. Like, I mean, we come in with our, you know what I mean? With our hands drawn up. We y'all we need to y'all need to prove over a, a long mm -hmm. period of time that we can trust y'all. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but sister yeah. Sabria, you you know that you know that goes both ways though. Okay. That, you know, brothers, we enter into courtship, we enter into marriages, and we we feel the same way. Like we want to be loved, we want to be respected. Mm. And there there's a matter of trust. Right. Can I trust you? Mm -hmm. Can I feel safe with you to give right. you me? Right. You know, wow. forget about the economic part of it because yeah. we know, brothers, we all men, we're going to take care of our responsibilities and we're taking care of them when we're not married. So when we get married, we're still going to take care of our responsibility. But to be able to trust that woman, knowing yeah. that I can let my guard down and know mm -hmm. that it's okay, you're not going to hurt me in the midst of a conversation, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. You're not gonna throw stones at me. You're, you're not gonna remind me of all of the things that I shared with you when we were having pillow talk. Uh -huh. That is the core thing that myself and other brothers, I hope that are trying to get married, that's what we're looking for. You know, we, of course you want a woman that you're physically attracted to and she prays after all of that you want to make sure that you can trust this woman right because men we get hurt too and we are afraid we are very I much get hurt y'all don't play no games i'll be shut down for life oh, brother Chad. So true <laughs> <laughs> if i could just jump in right there because <laughs> because I, I i feel like the you know why i don't want to get married right not one to get married, I think is a trauma response, right? Yes, whether absolutely. whether you experienced it directly or you witnessed someone go through something, right? You have yeah. now been shaken up to the point now where like, you know, all the walls are up and, you know, I'm protecting myself because I'm not going to get hurt like that, right? Yes. Um, and, what you, and what we all have to understand is that to love fully and love deeply and to be able to really pull out of the pull out of that relationship and grow it the way it needs to be grown, you have to be vulnerable. Right. Yes. Um, and you only get that vulnerability through trust as, as uh, mm. Jihad so eloquently stated. So. Mm. Wow. SubhanAllah. That's really powerful. I, um, I think sister said, these are all symptoms of PTSS, post-traumatic slave syndrome. Mm -hmm. This is why we have to address the issues of healing in the black community that yeah. Jihad mentioned it, which we don't often hear enough. You know, you hear more like just get married, just 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 work it out, just get married. But they, we do if we're looking at us collectively as a people, we can't ignore what we've been through. No, right? no, no. Yeah, I mean, like, even just think of the concept of how we were forced to be bred, like right. you know, forced to breed. Excuse me, forced to breed to like the love. We couldn't, we didn't have time for that. We had to just sex have kids. How many of us operate in our marriages like that? Sex, kids, that's it. Right. 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 And so that's our collective stuff. SubhanAllah. Well, and then, you know, the one one more thing I, I wanted to address, too, was just, um, you know, everybody, you know, come, especially, well, Muslims have this phrase, you know, make sure you get your rights. Right. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's on the rights. You know, what is my right and what do you owe me? Right. And, it, <laughs> you know, that is the antithesis of a loving relationship. Right. So mm -hmm. a loving relationship is about what you're going to give. Right. Right? right. And, you know, there's an old saying like you don't like you don't give to those whom you're supposed to love. Right. Like you love those to whom you give. Wow. Right. So so it's 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 one of those things where where you when you show when you give of yourself, sacrifice mm -hmm. of yourself, yeah. uh, become vulnerable, become trusting. Uh, you know, give your ideas, energy, talent, skills, the whole thing. 
um, that in and of itself, it, you know, you're bringing that to the relationship. Um, and if you expect someone to be perfect, you know, a perfect manager of that or a perfect shepherd of that or a perfect, uh, you know, user of those talents and things. I mean, like you're that's that's just not that's just not, you know, um, realistic. Right. People are going to say things that, that they're going to hurt your feelings that are going to, um, you know, cause you, you know, uh, you know, some pause. Right. But what we have to understand is that, you know, uh, part of being a in a loving relationship is becoming as has been coined uh, before a professional forgiver, right? Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. that you know, and we're not talking about abuse. I, I always gotta you know gotta preface. You always gotta give that disclaimer. I appreciate that. I'm not talking about abuse. Okay. <laughs> I'll put it um, it, you know, um, and and that is different for everyone, right? Because uh, you know, one person might be able to deal with you know a certain level of um, criticism, right? And others, you know, this is abuse to me. I can't deal with this. And, you know, and it, and it breaks your confidence, self-esteem, the whole thing. So, but the whole part of it, though, is is that, um, is that right, we, we grow up watching Hollywood movies and people, you know, fall in love and it's passionate and they, you know, they, they're, they're making love and they're knocking things off the table and, uh, and they get married and then they live happily ever after. And that is not marriage. That's not reality. Um, and, um, and so we have these, these um, these expectations of marriage that are unrealistic and expectations of each other that are unrealistic and oftentimes not even communicated effectively. Right. So right. I want you to cook every night. I never say that to you. Right. Mm -hmm. I want you, you know, uh, to pay all the bills. I want you to wash my car every Sunday or, or I don't ever want to touch a gas pump. You don't say that till after you're married or you know, so some of these things are, you know, you know, have to be negotiated. And yeah. what I always say is that people typically can get along as long as they agree, right? Most people are agreeable and everything is sunshine. That's the time, right? You know, as long <laughs> as we agree, right? Especially when they're trying to get you, you know. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> but the problem is when we disagree, right? Mm -hmm. You know, can we be agreeable as we disagree? You know, yeah. are you going to call me some ugly names? Are you going to curse at me? Are you going to call the cops on me? Right. Um, and, you know, are you going to try to be physical with me? Right. Um, and so and so that's where relationships don't last, where they can't get together. And then if you have children or people that witness these things, they become traumatized by it. And certainly uh, my sister said it earlier. She said marriage is the place where you get hurt. Mm. Right. Wow. That's. That I mean, when she said that, it, it blew my mind, right? Yeah. Um, and um, and so that's 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 a perception that has to be, you know, really reshaped and and, and challenged in a way that is positive. Meaning that, as was as was stated, we have to highlight more um, thriving and positive um, images of marriage. I think. And I, yeah. The issue with that sometimes, sorry, is 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 simply that. You know, people have been married as long as I have, right? And um, you know, and, and it's been continuous, right? Is that um we 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 always know that you know marriage is an ebb and flow, right? So you right. never take it for granted, you never act like you always know them 100 percent and take it like you know, um, like it's gonna be there forever. You have to treat it like something that you have to constantly nurture and right. know the the you know the uh sensitive nature of it. So absolutely. Um, yeah, these are all things that have to be considered, I think. Jazakala Kaidan for that perspective. I wanted to ask, and then we're going to bring everybody back on the table um, in just a moment. But I do want to just, I didn't want to, you know, kind of uh, breeze over this point. Brother Yakin, the ladies are really feeling like, um, you know, the young brothers or men are not um, valuing, um, are not really valuing them. Like a woman comes a dime a dozen. You know, I get one, I get another. And where God is getting another, you know, is is this is this the mentality or are women just kind of super sensitive? Another brother shared with me that the standards that women are having now are so unreasonable that we can't the brothers can't even keep up with it, right? Um, what makes them upset? What's what 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 boundaries they have now? What makes them have you know all these sort of layers that are like ever changing? Are you do you, first? I wanted to ask you: Do you find that as young men that the value for women is still the same or is it sort of a, a dime a dozen type of thing you know well that's a tricky question because it's like okay yeah we'd be like 
if I can't get this, you know, if this one doesn't work out, then I'm gonna get another one. But I feel like that's how everyone thinks. Okay, like, fair. Like, he, they're just all leaves from a tree. They fall, I'm gonna get another one. You know, I'm gonna keep on picking. I'm gonna pick them until there ain't no more. But there's always a plethora of them. So that's how I see that too. But then it's like, we do value our women because like, you know, it's a saying behind every great man is an even greater woman. Like you gotta have that to a backbone. You gotta have that type of um, affiliation behind you so you can be successful. So mm-hmm. I don't think the value of women has diminished, but I feel like since everybody's got that mindset that you're not, not say special, so to say, but there's more, it's like, I have so many options right. that if you are special in your own way, there's also another person special in that way. And he could probably do what you can do for me and better. Like, mm. That's the mentality. Brother Jihad, is that is that common or that's what you see also in the brothers? I mean, you know, that, hey. <laughs> So many out here, right? So many. (laughs) Um, Yeah, well, the young brothers are going to get all the brothers in trouble. No, no, no. No, I, 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 some, some, a lot of brothers have that attitude. Like, if it doesn't work, then my cat jumped on me. Or if if it is working, if it's working, it can work again and again. There's also that, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of research, a lot of research with talking to the sisters. Uh, brother, how, how old are you again, brother? 18. 18. He's he's really intelligent, mashallah. Yeah, he's <laughs> hey, man. He's sharp. He's on the money, man, for 18 years old. I like yeah. him. I, yeah. I like his mindset. I, I like the goals that he has for himself, for life itself and, and marriage. Yeah, mashallah, mashallah. Well, Jazakallah, Kaiden brothers. I wanted to just, we're going to end, mashallah, shortly, but I wanted to bring the ladies on. So we're going to try to, Malika, we're going to try to make this look pretty. It's a lot of us. Mm-hmm. We're going to try to make it look like something. <laughs> hey, Lay, you're at, the cen- you're at the center. Let me see if we can make it a little bigger. Yep, we can. This is a little bit better. Hey, guys. So i ladies. Welcome back. Like Sam. Like Sam. Any thoughts about what you guys heard, ladies? No. You know, I, mean, <laughs> I have I have uh, nothing to argue against. They made some pretty good points. Yeah, yeah, mashallah. Subhanallah. I definitely appreciate um, us just having this sort of layered conversation. And, um, you know, mashallah, that, you know, we're all here together and we were willing to just talk plain about it. Um, I wanted to, there was a couple of um, questions I wanted to sort of bring in, um, but I did want to ask as it relates to, um, for those um, why I don't want to get married, um, what are some solutions? Anybody can answer this. What are some solutions? Do we need to actually push people towards marriage? Do we need to kind of be more accepting that people have different lifestyles? What are some solutions that we can offer with this growing up epidemic of people just not wanting to do it. I, I think that we need to have more um, surroundings in the match, more more classes, more programs geared around young young people getting married and you know older people getting married too. Um, following some of the things that like you know when you looked at like the Nation of Islam, for instance, mm-hmm. they had a program. They had a set way how, you know, they had the, 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 the young FOI class, they had the, the MGT classes. Those classes were gearing the brothers and the sisters at whatever stage they were to be ready for marriage. Um, alhamdulillah, we know that the Sunnah is the best and I'm, I'm not taking anything away from the Sunnah. I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm saying. But we have not yet in the Sunni community made it that type of environment whereas though a brother comes in and a sister comes in and we have that that class that nurtures them and teaches that young sister how to be a young wife and teaches that young brother how to be a good provider and a young husband for his new wife that that's not missing that's missing in the islamic community and alhamdulillah for imam idris for everything that he's doing in the community um 
of a master the law. That's one of the very few communities, African American I'm speaking about, here in the city of Philadelphia that is grooming people towards that. Mm-hmm. That that's missing. Those like little MGT classes where they were teaching sisters how to sew and how to bake and how to clean, those things are missing. Institute some of those things and and I I really believe that it would help brothers and sisters on that path especially if they're young, trying to get married. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Brother Jihad. Ladies, any proposed solutions? Go ahead, Mary. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can talk. Go first. Um, I was just going to say, like, you know, as people, I feel like we just need to have more open discussion about marriage and really allow our, as young Muslim women and men, to really realize the life that we're going to be getting into when we get married. So a more open discussion of marriage, the ups and downs, the pros and cons, what can happen, what will happen. You know what I mean? Allowing people to realize that this is going to be the real world. You're going to be stepping in and going to be also having to not provide only for yourself, but for someone else. So I feel like having more open discussion, actually really bring up marriage in a healthy way in which it's not like demonize i get it <laughs> some people don't want to get married but we also have to remember that we could always look back to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and aisha or khadija or you know what i mean marriage can be a beautiful and happy thing so i just think if we really implement it more into the muslim community actually have talks about it we start recommending books about it we actually start coming together in realizing that as young Muslim people, we're going, we're about to be the next generations of, you know, sisters and brothers. <laughs> so it's just like you gotta realize that we have to start really looking into into our Islamic knowledge and becoming more profound in it. Yeah, really powerful. Thank you very much. Um, I, once person said here that we need more of marriage maintenance courses. We're sick and tired of the pre-talk. Let us secure what's built. Kind of like essentially the lack of trust or lack of appeal is because what is being established is not staying. It's not sustainable. Yeah. Imam Adris, what do you? Yeah. What yeah. Do you so um, right on to everything that was said so far. Um, you know, that's that is part of what what we are doing and teaching um, at Master the Law, and we bring in some of the experts, right? So we have mm-hmm. the Village Auntie, Sister Angelica, out. You know, at least once a year, and. Um, you know, she comes out and and, and uh, Dr. Kais comes as, as well sometimes, you know, teaching that courting process, talking about, um, you know, the individual things around around intimacy and things like that. Um, and also conflict resolution, as I was saying it, you know, yeah. you know, most of us know how to be loving when it's time to be loving. Right. Like you see all these babies around here. So we know we know how we know how to do that. Right. Right. What we don't know how to do sometimes, right, is 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 to is to be able to take that breath and be able to work ourselves through a conflict and come out on the other side. Maybe we don't agree. Maybe we will never agree. There's some things with me and my wife that I complained about it the first year we got married. This is approaching year 20. And it is still a problem, right? Yeah, you guys could always agree. But it's not at the level of I'm divorcing you, where this can't work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other part of it too, I always tell, you know, um, I recommend to um, to young couples that are married, right? You know, uh, if you can, because, you know, people are at different stages of life, but if you can, take time to get to know each other. Don't run into having babies right away if you can, right? Um Take time to get to know each other, build some memories, go some places, do some great things, sleep late, eat brunch, do all do all the great stuff, go to Hodge, do whatever you got to do to build up a store of positive and good memories because the trying parts of marriage are going to come. Right. It's going to be tried personally as, as individuals and then as a couple. Things are going to happen. Um and he may not always protect as much as you would like him to protect, right? She may not always, you know, be as trusting as you'd like her to trust. She, she might share some of your intimate stuff with her girlfriends or with her mama, right? Um, you got to be able to get past that or at least um, come to a level of respect between each other where you say, I'm sorry I hurt you, I, you know, I, you know yeah. please forgive me, and try your best to move forward. And I think, you know, that, that really is you know what's not being modeled um you know my 
you know, again, my wife grew up in a, a family where they didn't argue in front of the children, right? My parents, you know, sometimes did, sometimes didn't, right? Um, we do the same thing. I want, like, if if I have an argument and, 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 and my children can hear it, I also want them to see me when we make up and kiss and hug and all that kind of stuff, too. Yeah. Just to show, no, marriage is not going to be perfect. Sometimes mommy is dad, mad at daddy. Sometimes daddy's mad at mommy. Uh, but guess what? They made up. They kissed, they hugged, and you know, life moves on. We still go into Absolutely. the park together. We still going to go, you know, go do things together. So I just think that understand that it, that it is an ebb and flow, that it's not going to be perfect, that it is half of the dean because it's going to test every ounce of what you say you believe. Um, and life is this is not gender. This is a test, right? And your spouses are going to be the most intimate person with you. They're going to see how much of a hypocrite you are or not. <laughs> right um how well your your prayer habits are or not mm -hmm. um, and i'm also going to see you at your strongest points and also your weakest points right Absolutely. so that's why it's important to you know to to pick to the have right that sort of mindset because i look right in imam i appreciate that yeah. i wanted to bring a point and i'm going to go to you Miriam, with this point but this sister mm -hmm. said something that's powerful and she said we really need to focus because beneath the layer of the why I don't want to get married is there's there's a I hear a lot of fear okay I hear a lot of fear I hear um a lot of mistrust um and this is something that is happening um inside and outside of marriages as it relates to men and women okay and so she said we really need to focus on changing our mindset about how we view each other as, as brothers and sisters we have to be intentional about healing and wanting to see the best for each other like we literally have to big up each other so we can rid ourselves of the insecurities that we have which forces us not to be vulnerable and not trust each other mm -hmm. therefore not feeling safe and one of the things I talk a lot about and one of the things I teach, you know, just as a behavioral therapist is just the skill of empathy. Empathy has a set of skills like to actually to the most people don't lack empathy or most empathy kind of um, is impacted by trauma. So if you have like childhood trauma and such, you may grow up with a lack of empathy. Um, people that have personality defects may have a lack of empathy. And so I talk often about the skill of just as a woman, I need to have empathy for my brother, you know, like he needs to have empathy for me as a woman. So I want to ask you, Miriam, um, just as it relates uh, to this sort of the relationship between the male and the female, what do you feel like we need to do or how should we be moving forward with just sort of being able to shift our mindset? Is there some type of work we need to do to better trust our brothers? Um, well, first and foremost, therapy. <laughs> I think you, you spoke a little bit on this, like you're a behavioral uh, a therapist. Therapy, 100%. And therapy, not just like um, like for you and your husband, but therapy also for you, right? You should, have, you should be um, going to therapy before marriage. You should be going to therapy during marriage. If, if you get divorced, you should be going therapy after marriage, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And um, the reason why I just recommend that is because when you aren't self-aware, when you aren't constantly in a state of reflection um, of, you know, you you take an action and then you think about why you took that action, right? right. You, you know, you think a certain thought, like, where is that thought coming from? You are blindsided to things that are clearly obvious to other people. Right. And even if a person with empathy skills, you know, comes and say, you know, I understand, uh, I really get it. You know, I, I may have gone through the same exact thing. Uh, if you are still not putting in your own effort, um, their empathy doesn't it doesn't matter. Like it, it it's like throwing, you know, um, eggs at a brick wall. It, it's not yeah. going to do anything, you know. And so I would I would really say therapy first and foremost. And then I would also say um uh, and this this comes out of a conversation I had with my uncle um, right before uh, this uh, entire podcast. And he had really talked about the importance of having trust in a law, right? And where a lot of like in uh, youth is like trust, like full, absolute reliance, right, on a law. Because, you know, we say like we see something bad happening. We're like, OK, I don't want I don't want to be a part of that. Um, but we may not realize that we don't get the full picture. Right. And so we try to have everything like we, we try to we see something bad. We try to prevent it. Um, and so we end up like closing off a part of ourselves or a part of our hearts or like not participating in certain things. Uh, but what we don't realize is we don't see the full picture. And a law does. And so when you add an 
this is something I totally got just out of the conversation I had with him. When you add a law into like the equation, it like lights everything up. Like there's hope in the world, right. <laughs> you know? And it, all of a sudden, like empathy, like it's so much more than just empathy. It's like uh, uh, an outburst of love and understanding for your fellow Muslim. You know, I think that if we are always hyper fixated on you're a man, I'm a woman, you know, you're a wife, I'm a husband. Um, you know, we tend to lose the fact that we're all human and we're all Muslim right. and we're all going to go to the same place. We all die. I mean, you know, my my janaza isn't going to look any different from your janaza. I'm not going to lie. And um, it's it's when we're adding in the humanity part. and I just see you as human. Um, yeah. I think that the the like th there's just more space um for what's possible and not for hopelessness that you you currently see uh like in in today's <laughs> in today's society mashallah subhan that's all we can hope you know mashallah you know subhanallah just as a generation that you know just personally i've been divorced you know more than once and um you know just as someone who completely just to be transparent completely believes in Allah you know like you said that full picture like Allah gives each of his servants the particular ingredients the life that is suited for you for the journey and path that he has you on and we really want our young people to understand that although we completely understand the hesitation and the fear but knowing like I said when you put your faith everything in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you trust that journey even if the outcome isn't what people think is the perfect outcome. Oh, that's not successful to be divorced. No, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have decided that that's your success. Because from that point, that's maybe where you're going to grow. That's maybe where you're going to be connected to him. Maybe you're going to help humanity from that pathway, right? That's what we really collectively want. I'm just thinking just on behalf of my generation, some of us that may have not always show the best example that's what we ultimately want you guys to get that ultimately this is about our relationship and journey with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what I called this season was the ascension every set of experiences every challenge every relationship what happened with mama and papa when you were young all of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has designed that inshallah it is for you to kind of get closer and to use these set of experiences on your journey back to him inshallah ta'ala I say the true Muslim the ascending Muslim doesn't attach themselves to outcomes. They attach themselves to the destination, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I thank you so much for sharing that, mashallah. I want to give everybody space for their final thoughts. Umeya, did you have anything that she wanted to just end this conversation on? Um, I just wanted to say this was a very um, eye-opening conversation. It really led for me to realize a lot of things I have, me myself have to take into consideration and make sure I'm the best Muslim I can be before getting into a marriage. And also looking at the retrospective of how marriage can be the process and realizing that at the end of the day, yes, we are human, but everything that we're supposed to do is for the sake of a law. You know what I mean? Everything, it, when it comes down to it, if from even from this discussion, you know, we're doing it for the sake of making sure that people are knowing, people are in the now, and people are realizing that we are really try to make a movement here and make sure that we as young Muslim women and men can give as much education as we can to the Islamic community. And inshallah, by the grace of Allah, you know, we all get our good deeds from this and that hopefully we all have successful marriages in the future I when mean, the time is right. I mean, I mean, I mean, thank you so much to Elena. Any final thoughts? Well, I don't want to sound like a Debbie Downer, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, love. Go. You have the floor. Is it too late to learn these healthy ways of and in court and stuff like that? Because I feel like these are learned toxic traits from you know household traditions and you know just generational curses kind of thing. You know, is it too late? You said, "Is it too late to learn?" I didn't hear. Is it too late to to learn? You no know, healthy way of trying yeah. to. You value each other as men and women is it yeah. i think that's a valid question i don't think that's debbie downer man i'm gonna ask everybody what do you guys think elaine is posing a question yakeen is it too late it's better to let the change right <laughs> if you want the change to come then the change is going to happen is we all we all have the power to do to do, build or have to do we create our own narrative so if you want something to happen then you know, inshallah, if Allah wills, then it will happen. 
Mm. And I doubt that he will stop you from succeeding in life. So, SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. MashaAllah. Anybody else want to chime into that question before I pop over? Okay. MashaAllah. Thank you, Yakin. That was beautifully stated. Yakin, any final thoughts? Yes. Um, I, have a, I have a solution. I feel like that parents should stop trying to neglect the topic of marriage until people are getting older. Because mm. it seems like, you know, marriage, you don't get mentioned marriage now until you're probably about 16. All right. Mm. So you go 16 years without even the thought of marriage. And then you get the you get marriage mentioned to you once or twice. And then by the time that happens, society already got you by the influence. You feel you done talk to so many other people. The influences are in your head. And 16 years versus two to three years is 16 beats two to three. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. parents have to start trying to not really impose their will, but teach them at a suitable like pace. Like I'm not saying, okay, once it gets five, start, you know, powering all the, you know, marriage, this marriage, that, Islam is some that, but like as a pace, as a steady pace, like, okay, you know what this, this and steps and ways so that way when they hit 17, 18, when they become a young adult, then it's not new to them. It's not, it's almost like, okay, I understand, I have a grasp of it, I have an understanding of it. Now it's up to me to see what I'm gonna do with it. Right, right. That's a powerful point. And I just wanted to chime and add on because um, you know, most of the behavior we sort of adopt is learned behavior. We often repeat what we see. You know what I mean? So sometimes it goes beyond. The thing I love about children, that's why I always work with kids first and foremost, is that you can say whatever you want to them. If you can't model that, if they can't see it, they, that, they're they not always going to take that in. And I also, often want to caution us as parents as well that we have to be mindful about, you know, our own healing. If we go through a difficult divorce, we have a challenge with, you know, our, our children's father, whatever it is, we have to be conscious about how we handle that because our children see that model as well. And those are sort of the patterns people repeat. Well, I can't trust no man because daddy was a bum, according to mom, right? And so these sort of things get passed on as well. And so in addition to what you're saying, young brother, when you say we need to start talking about it earlier, we also have to be very conscious of as parents of our model because of, of what our kids are actually viewing the things we say you know in our banters just you know in our frustrations we have to be very conscious because these are the things that really get imprinted mm -hmm. so thank you for that brother yakeem she had any final thoughts no i i you know i agree with uh everything that everybody said this evening this wonderful beautiful conversation uh i think one of the sisters hit the nail right on the head. She said that we have to trust. We have to trust in the law. And ultimately, I think of Sister Miriam that said it, um, that our outcome has to be to be pleasing to a law first and foremost. And we have to really go into it knowing that no one is perfect. None of us, none of us are perfect. Yeah. And just solely trust the law. And I'm all for those pre-marital uh, counseling sessions. I think those sessions are, are so very important um counseling sessions for yourself counseling premarital counseling sessions and even when you get married i think you should still have some type of um outlet or some type of uh source that you go to to talk to you uh if everyone was they're blessed like the imam you know <laughs> his father's an imam so when he has problems i'm sure he goes to his father for 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 advice Mm-hmm. SubhanAllah, having that person to go to. Thank you. And Imam Idris, any final thoughts? Yeah, sure. Um, I think we have to always remember that marriage is not marriage is not our institution. It's the institution that Allah calls us to. Um, and what Allah calls us to is best for our life, right? Mm -hmm. If we if we go about it in a proper manner, right? All the things that our Prophet, peace and blessed be upon him, modeled it in good character. Mm -hmm. Um, amongst his companions, with his wives. Those are all things that we should bring to our personality, inshallah, in our character so that we have, you know, successful relationships in general, yeah. friendships, business relationships, but also marriage, right? Yeah. Um, and so anything that we do feasibly or, or with the intention of pleasing Allah, know that he will bless you in it if you are sincere. 
And also, when I talk with couples, uh, which I try to avoid doing at all costs, right? Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what I do, uh, Allah says in the Quran that that it, you know, first first off, his his first thing is to bring two parties together from each side of the family, right? I, right. I I well. mm -hmm. But Allah says that if if the two sides wish for reconciliation or want reconciliation, sincerely want reconciliation, that He will make it so. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have to, again, put our trust in Allah. Also know that being married, because there are lots of people who are together with people, who are having babies mm -hmm. with people, who have property with people, who are going on vacations to Cancun and, and Hawaii and with people that they are not married with, right? So marriage is what we're doing to please Almighty God, because he, he said this is the best way for us to be together in that type of union. So anything you do for the pleasure of Allah with the intention of, of pleasing Allah, Will certainly be blessed um and we have to get more educated on how to how to better dwell together in those relationships so i would certainly we do three you know at least three premarital counseling sessions and then we also do sessions afterwards um and try to make um we certainly are not doing enough we, we could be doing a lot more um and and these conversations have have really re been really enlightening to me that we have a lot more work to do if we yeah. want to build strong families and strong communities, inshallah. So. Inshallah. Jazakallah, Kaiden. And I'm going to end with this beautiful post from a dear sister. She said, excellent panel. I'm off a certain age, getting divorced, but I learned so much from the young people. I now clearly see the part I played when the brothers talked about the man's sensitivity and hurt and his needs to trust that we won't hurt them with our words. I need to make amends to my husband for my words. I am focused. I, I am, I guess she means she's always been focused on her hurt only. MashaAllah. So Jazakallah Kaiden, you guys, for bringing all of this to the table and allowing us to see just beyond our own selves, what we want for our, for our own selves and see one another. MashaAllah. I just want to ask this final question to my four young people. Do you want to get married? <laughs> not right now. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> Maybe after 25, but not right now. <laughs> Still no. Okay. Yeah, King's like I, he made it clear from the beginning. But yeah, they know, but definitely not now. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And so Mary, you just I, I gotta do what I gotta do first <laughs> before I get married. <laughs> well, may Allah bless each and every one of you guys. We need to, as a community, collectively, continuously to pour into one another, especially into the next generation. You heard them say it clearly. I heard it over and over. We're not pouring enough into them. We haven't had enough talks. We haven't included them in enough dialogues. Um, we haven't given them a multitude of different lens and experiences. And so there's still an opportunity to do that. And I pray, inshallah, that Allah can make us better. I pray that you guys Amen. are blessed with the best future, the best outcome, whatever it is that Allah decides that is best and good for and pleasing to him. For all of you, that is my collective dua for each Amen. and every one of you guys. I mean, thank Amen. you so Amen. much for being on this show. It takes so much to do it. MashaAllah, like, I, I mean, I'm just like, the young people, brothers, you have me, Mammy, Dries, I, you know, they just is out, they're out shining, right? <laughs> they got a beat. <laughs> MashaAllah, we're so humbled. Sure. We're mm -hmm. so humbled. Thank you so much um, to you, um, dear Miriam. MashaAllah, may Allah continue to bless your studies. I deeply appreciate, I learned so much. I'm so much inside just from a lot of what you shared. So may Allah bless you with that which is best. Um, so, Maya, thank you so much. I, I see you, mashallah, is just like, ooh, just like a beacon of how I wanted to be at your age. Mashallah, you're just strong and just, you know, uh, just assertive. And may, may Allah continue to increase you and bless you with what is good. I mean, I mean Lena, you know, I love you. Thank you so much. Like, this podcast was brought because of you and your courage and your willingness to talk about something that all the youth are talking about and just bringing it to the table. So may Allah bless you with all that is good and what's best. Of course, Auntie. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and for the Yaqeen, bro, I'm like, yo, I, I need I need you to be, I need young brothers, I need the brothers to be surrounded by you. Most of the people said they love your mindset. May Allah bless you. May he increase you. May he make you successful. I just, I love the way, mashallah, that you think. Um, SubhanAllah, just as a young brother. So thank you so much for being on the show. And may Allah bless you with all that you seek and all that is good. 
Thank you. And Brother Jihad, thank you always, family, bro. Thank you for always coming on, representing, being honest, authentic. Thank you so much. May Allah bless you. I know you had a whole long work day, so I appreciate well, you. May, may, may Allah bless you, sister, because what you have done with this platform over the years, you have taken it somewhere beyond radio. I may be doing radio here in Philadelphia, but you are touching so many souls out exactly. here and may Allah give you so much success with this platform Me. and those that are watching support this sister and uh, what she's yeah, doing do thank support you so her much. please support her thank you so much for the chat that means so much alhamdulillah thank you imam idris for mm -hmm. being our resident imam mashallah the go-to mm -hmm. imam for the, a lot of these social issues i really appreciate you applaud you and i love how you know it, it's you, you implement practicality and a lot of your teachings and make it really palatable for some of us that's just out here struggling. So may Allah bless you, <laughs> brother. Baby. Um, yeah. <laughs> me. and, and like Jihad said, I have to applaud you, the effort that you're doing. Um, like you said, I mean, listen, the dean is meant to be lived, right? The dean is for the dunya, right? Um, if you can't, if, if, if it's not applicable, if, if it's not something that people can actually touch and, and is tangible and can use, then um, we're not doing it any justice. So um, these third spaces that 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 uh, that folks like you and Jihad are, are are hosting, where folks can talk about some of these things, because some of our masters are way too conservative. We can't have these kind of conversations in, in yeah. the mass group, which, which I think is crazy. But um, but but it is what it is, right? So uh, so thank you for having platforms like this, um, giving young people a voice. Right. And um, having an opportunity to actually express themselves so people like me can learn about what's going on and try to be a better leader, inshallah. Jazakallah, Kaid. And thank you guys so much. Thank you to the Amadians, amazing audience members. I really, um, we were so deep into the conversation and just giving space for our, yeah, I, as you notice, I didn't do as m many um, audience comments as I typically do, but it's just because I really wanted to give space for the young people to just be heard completely. So thank you guys for being patient. Thank you for all your comments. I encourage some of my young folks to come go back on and look at the comments. Feel free to comment to anything that you missed or overlooked. Um, but Jazakallah Kaiden, thank you guys. We're coming back. I think we're going to have a little bit of delay in our next show. It might be three weeks, but I'll, I'll drop the date. The next episode is called Fornication in the Heart It Hardens. So we are going there with our experts, our sex experts, and people in the community really talking, uh, having a very layered conversation about sex outside of marriage. So we want to, you know, follow up this dialogue. Jazakallah Kaiden, love you guys radically. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.